Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I agree with one. What a peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren who are here in the church to stand up. And the ones who are at home can be the way they feel like. And we're going to open our Bibles in the book of Luke. On chapter 23. Luke 23. Luke 23, from verse 26. Have it open? Who doesn't have the Bible here in the projection on the wall? Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon a Syrian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of, of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the day are coming which they will say, Blessed are the barren pombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they came, had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Amen. The brethren may sit down. My brethren, we have entered into a topic very important for the church. We have entered this week on the topic that needs to be worked on by all of us. It's called, what is the topic? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And here we're going to see Jesus, who was and is for us the greatest example of a man who was a servant of God, a man that has had made a definition on the Lord, a man that had not looked to who he was and to who he, he could have been. He didn't look to himself, but Jesus looked to each one of us. And tonight, Jesus is looking once again to each one of us. Because Jesus, He knows us. He knows what we need. And this topic, forgiveness, is a, a topic that is crucial you know, in the life of the Christian. Because many times the Christian gets becomes sick, falls sick because the Christian does not know the reason they do not know what is causing that disease, that sickness. But many times is the lack of forgiveness. Not only of forgiveness to the brother that had offended him, but forgive him himself. Jesus here 
was at this moment. Jesus, he was fulfilling what the Father had, we can say here, determined. That was the project of God. Not because Jesus deserved, no, in any way, not at all, but because didn't exist and doesn't exist and that would never exist a man that could have taken on the role of us sinners. Only Jesus was able to do this. Only Jesus, because He was and He is holy. Only the Lord Jesus was able to do what no one else could, no, no, even the, uh, your father, your mother, or your best friend or uncle could have done for us, to die in our place. Not only die in our place, but resurrect, defeating death on our behalf. The problem of the Christian is not dying, because this There's no way to go around it, to escape from it. <coughs> we are not the ones who are waiting for death. That is the one who is waiting for us. There's no way for us to escape from it. It may last 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, but it's going to come to the limit in which all of us are going to be able to, f going to have to face death. But the problem of the Christian is not the death of the body, it's a physical death. It's not the physical death, not the death for this life, but the spiritual death. And this one, Jesus had defeated on our behalf. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, all of this would have been enough for the Christian. For, for them to understand their position as sinners, their position as useless, their position as a, a powerless, a person that is powerless with regards to death, with regards to Jesus, who is the doctor of doctors, who is the Lord of lords. He's the one who died but today has resurrected. Jesus here now, he was receiving at the time the worst condemnation that could have happened to a man, death of, of the cross. There was no, no worse condemnation than this one. There was no other condemnation that could have come even close to this one. He was humiliating. It was a way, we can even say that it was something that was cruel. And Jesus, there, Jesus was, and the disciples crying, the sisters crying, and a few had already, they were already farther than closer. They had escaped. They were afraid. They ran away. And Jesus was there. Look at, at the name of the place where Jesus was located. Just by reading the name of the location, it was, it was, it was called Calvary, the skull, which means skull mountain. There was where he was crucified between two criminals, between two men, he himself, they, they themselves, they received condemnation for the time it was fair because they were criminal, but not Jesus. Jesus did not commit any crime. Jesus did not, did not disobey any law. But he was uh, was condemned by by envy 
and by the fear of the religious of the time was conspiracy and now Jesus was in between two criminals, evil doers, a man that was rejected, and one, a man that was misunderstood, a man that was criticized. Isn't it true? Jesus was all of this. But it is interesting that that before Jesus dying, look what Jesus spoke to the Father. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Look, what, what prayer, only Jesus. Because you said Jesus is an example for us, an example of humbleness. Jesus leaves for us here the greatest teaching, biblical teaching, for man, for man to go to heaven. Because it is useless for us to be here carrying a Bible under our armpit, uh, attending services, praying to the Lord, uh, paying, uh, giving our tithes, and doing everything that is expected of a good Christian. But if that person has inside of their, their heart bitterness, and if they have inside of their heart bitterness towards someone, uh, the Bible does not teach this. Jesus left for us a teaching, a glorious teaching. Because the Christian, many times, loses his blessing. Many times we lose our blessing. I, I'm including myself. Because, my brethren, the Bible is easy to be preached. You come here, you read a text, and, and spend half an hour at home practicing and go in front of the mirror. And you made a mistake, you correct. And it's, it's very easy. To speak, to recite biblical verses is easy. It's easy for you to look to your brother and say, Hey, my brother, you're wrong. It's easy to do this. But it's difficult to leave the Word. It's difficult for you to leave your life based on the Word of God. This, all of us, we're, we're all included in, it, in this. There is, no, there is no one today, not a man that can say, I... I I'm a literal Bible. It is in my DNA. The Bible is my in, is in my DNA. The, the, there's no person that can say that. Man's DNA was changed in Adam. So the one who says, I, I do not sin, is the one that sins the most. Because it has already lied. He's already a liar. And in Adam... We acquired sin, the disobedience. And sin is this. Sin is to disobey the Lord. So now when Jesus, Lord Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Because they do not know what they are doing. Look, what a wonderful example. And Jesus left this example for us. Not only in words. Jesus did not live here. It's only simply written so that we could today be able to read what Jesus said. But we're going to show to the brethren that Jesus, he also left examples in the Acts. And, and soon after, after Jesus resurrected, who Jesus looked for? Who did Jesus look for after he resurrected? The disciples, the ones who ran away, that left him, that abandoned him, that forsook him. Peter, Jesus went to look for Peter and asked, Peter, do you love me? Three times, he asked. Jesus asked to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Jesus could have said, yeah, man, you, you are a complicated person. 
Didn't I tell that you were going to fail and you did not listen to me? You said that this would never happen. But in the first opportunity, Peter, you say that you didn't even know me? Oh man, what a difficult thing. You say that you did not walk with me. You say that you did not even know me. Peter, how low have you come? Jesus didn't say that. Jesus, he, when he resurrected, he said to the, to the sisters, Hey, look to Peter, uh, go to Peter and tell him that he, I resurrected. And later on, Jesus speaks with Peter. Peter, do you love me? He said it three times. Hey, my brethren, here's the action of someone that really forgives. Forgiveness is, is this. And forgiveness is essential. In the life of a Christian, if he wants to be blessed by God. My brethren, forgiveness needs to be sincere. Forgiveness needs to come from eternity. That's why the Lord left for us the Holy Spirit, because it is the Holy Spirit that is going to work in our hearts. And if you have not been able to reach this level, that's all right. But pray to the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. And my brother, many times, many times, we hurt someone when, or we offended someone many times without even knowing. You know that? Or do you think that only you do this? Do you think that only you offend someone without having that intention to offend? My brethren, we live in an, uh, in an environment where the Holy Spirit flows. And many times, Christian, servant of God, does things on the flesh many times, outside of com uh, fellowship with the Lord. It's not but that the person was had an evil intent to say something or do something or kick your, or your leg. Many times it was without evil intention. It just said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And many times we do this as well. Not only you. Because many times a person says, oh, you said something I didn't like. Oh, but it was not with that intention. Many are like this. Because this environment is a spiritual environment. And then we believe that the things that are done here, that we all do here, we are new creatures in, in God. There was already in us a new birth. There was already in us the beginning or a process of conversion. And what we did outside, what we did before accepting Jesus, is no longer with us. We have been delivered from it. So many times, we need to believe and accept the request of forgiveness from someone. Many times a person comes in sincerity and asks for forgiveness. Look, I have done it, but it was never with evil intention. I didn't even notice. Forgive me. I'm not going to do it again. Many times a person says, look, that's all right. Okay. I don't think you, you for ask for forgiveness. It didn't come from our heart. I am sure of it. And my brother, the word says that Jesus he left for us many teachings, wonderful teachings. And we need to simply to enter into God's time and allow God to operate in our lives. The word tells us that when someone a brother, a sister, confront you or let's read the text of the week in Matthew Matthew 18 Matthew 18 verse 15 those says the following Matthew 18 verse 15 that's where we are studying this week if you have not had time to read the word or to go to Sunday school or 
going to the study. We're going to uh, give. We're going to Matthew 18, 15 to 16. Moreover, if, you, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his uh, fault between you and his al him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. That's what Jesus thought. If your brother went and offended you and mistreated you, kicked your leg and invaded your personal space, you have all the right to become upset. Of course you have. It was an invasion of your privacy or an invasion of, your, of a person. It was an aggression. That's right. But what has Jesus thought? Go to him. Call him and, and have a conversation with him. But many times the person said, oh, look, I think it's easier for me to call a sister from the church and say, sister, oh, look, pray for me, or a deacon, pray for me because a brother has offended me. I was very upset with him. That's not good. This is not in the Word. Jesus thought, if your brother has offended you, go to him first. Because if you do this, you're not causing uh, discomfort. You understand? Their heart, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaches us this. If your brother, go to him, call him, have a conversation with him, call him, sit down, and resolve the situation. If you have arrived home and spoke with your husband or a wife and speak with your brother, sister, you are no longer uh, following what Jesus thought. It's not that it's not going to work out. It might. But the intention of your heart was not to obey. The intention of your heart many times would have been to expose the situation. And the word is very clear. Go to him and speak to him particularly. Go to him in secrecy. Pray to the Lord first. Before asking prayer for a church, pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. I need to have a conversation with my brother. You give me patience. You, you're going to give me the means to do this, to hear and, and bite my tongue. Sometimes a person has a, a stronger temper. And I'm going to say, Lord, I'm not going to lose my blessing. I'm going to speak with my brother. He has offended me. He's going to ask for forgiveness. You're going to leave this place with an understanding. That's it. Speak to the Lord. You don't need to ask for prayer in the church. Oh, a brother offended me. I, I think it was some purpose. I think he did it because he wanted to do it. Then you're, you're already leaving what is a biblical teaching and doing what is in your heart and your mind. But Jesus was clear. And then he says, but if he, if he hears you, you're going to gain your, you, you have gained your brother. But if he doesn't hear but then you call witness. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the, bo the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. You maybe will be able to f cause him to understand. But if this doesn't happen, then if they doesn't hear after these two attempts, then you go to the church. Then you call the pastor. True. Isn't it true? That's that simple. You don't have to many times to be offended and sad and one day, two days, three days, four days. No, my brother, Jesus, he was went there immediately. Jesus was there already alone, abandoned, forsaken. And the disciples were ready to run away. And Jesus went there and and told and told the Father, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And Peter here, if you, if you continue, Peter said, Jesus, what, what, if, how many times should I forgive a brother? Seven times. Is there a limit now? If, if, if Should I forgive my brother seven times after the seventh time? You know why Peter said that? Because the rabbis thought the following. The good Jew has to forgive three times. If somebody slapped you, 
say, you can say, Amen, you're forgiven. You can slap me two more times. <laughs> two more times. Okay, you're forgiven. But from this point forward, you are my, you are my black book. You vanish from my sight. If I see you on a corner, it should be on the, on the other. Vanish from my sight. You no longer know me. So then Peter, in order to you know, fall into a good side with Jesus, he said, oh, since, since I'm much more holy, I would say it's three, three, six, I will be two times good and you'll be seven times because I'll be holy because I'm seven times. And then Jesus said, no, it's 70 times, 70 times seven. 70 times 7. So then P Peter went into a spiral. <laughs> well, so, that's too much. So my brethren, this text, this topic is very important for us. Because this topic of problems improperly dealt with, uh, disagreeing within the brethren, this happens not only inside of the church. Sometimes it also happens at home with the husband, the wife, with, with the son and the mother at work. It also happens. This happens with all of us because this is in us. It's inherent of us to be better to, than everyone else. Not to, be, to humiliate yourself. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself Take up your cross. How many times of, of, on the week? Every day. Take up your cross every day. My friend, cru cross here was not a, uh, a yoke, not a load. Now, where's your cross? You, did you leave your cross at home? Speaking about the, the wife or husband. <laughs> did you leave your cross out? You came alone, huh? No, that's not what Jesus is referring to. Taking up a cross is the suffering that Jesus went through. Taking up a cross is the humiliation. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up. Because the Bible says that the humble are going to be exalted. That's why it is important for you to humiliate yourself many times. To go to your brother or sister and to ask for forgiveness. And truly forgive them. The Holy Spirit does that. To forgive truly is when the Holy Spirit touched your heart and you forgive, you forget. You don't put the problem aside, you know, you know the, the stove, and you want to do something. This is taking too long, I'm going to put it on the bottom and pull it to the front, what I want to cook quicker. But tomorrow I'm going to deal with the problem later. The, the biblical forgiveness is this one, is to forgive someone truly. And a man will be only be able to achieve this in the spirit. If he is in the flesh, he's outside from the spirit, he will never forget, never forgive. And my brethren, God left for us this teaching. That's why we plead every time that we begin a service. We do not start any meeting without pleading for the blood of Jesus. We cannot do anything. We cannot leave your house if you wake up, if you pray to the Lord, Lord, as part of the blood of Jesus, forgive my sins. Why is that? Because God forgives men. God forgives men. And that's why our relationship with God always works out. You know that? That's why you are blessed by God. That's why when you pray to the Lord, Lord, open, uh, give me a new job, Lord. My son is sick or my son needs a uh, healing. And God answers. You know why? Because when you plead and when you confess to him your sin, you give a name to your sin, Lord. Today I said a lie. Lord, today I thought I, I, I had evil thoughts against a brother in the church. Today I did something against my husband that I lost my blessing. I teased him. And it happens. So you need to put a name. You need to confess to the Lord. And when you confess to the Lord, 
God forgives because there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is no sin greater than what Jesus went through at this moment in the cross when his blood was shed for us and there the veil was ripped from top to bottom giving to us a new path, a new opportunity giving to us access to the Holy of Holies to the holiness of God that's why my brethren we are blessed by the Lord because God truly forgives our transgressions and he teaches us to do the same. He teaches us. That's why, here's the word of God. Jesus went, he looked for the two disciples on the way to Emos. He went to disciples that were dying of fear, and he says, Peace be with you. That's why, brethren, the request of as the request of forgiveness needs to be done. Go to the, your brother and sister and sp have a conversation with them. Resolve the situation, but forgive them. Forgive them in the spirit. Pray to the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, give me authority. Lord, give me authority to speak in your name. Lord, give me authority to forgive, Lord. The one who is beside me. And the Lord is going to bless us. Because when we pray to the Lord and we ask for our brother, for the one who has transgressed against us, the Bible says Jesus taught us. And what did Jesus teach us? What is the thing that speaks about the Lord's prayer? Your will may be done in heaven and earth. Because look where is my the bread uh, our daily bread give us today and if forgive our debts in the same way we forgive our debtors. How can you want a that God to forgive you if you can't forgive your brother or sister? And look, our offense before God. It's much greater than something that might happen. And there's a little disagreement. Maybe the brother doesn't even know what he has done that has offended you. But our sin, no. The sin that we have committed many times, you, we work on it. Do you understand what we have done, what I've said? Sometimes man he sins, he, he's, he plans it. He goes around things and he seems aware of it. He plans it. Even those, their, their faults are forgiven by God. The problem is if you are, if you are caught on, on your way to sin, you don't have time to ask forgiveness to God. But if you ask for forgiveness to God, God forgives you. My brethren, my brethren, this is a topic that needs to be worked on in the midst of the church. Oh, you cannot say, you don't have to say, oh, now I'm going to forgive everyone. No, go to the brother or sister and have a conversation with them. This is the biblical teaching. Tell them, you have offended me. You mistreated me. What do you have to say about it? And he is going to say, maybe you will be even surprised. Is it true? Oh, forgive me. Jesus said this. They don't know what they are doing. My brethren, we are all subject to this. But this message is a message. Is this, is this a message that needs to be preached on Sunday night? There is no message of salvation. Who, who is the visited, visited, the visitor that is going to hear this message? This is a message that is precious to us because many brethren who are in the side of the church, who pain in their heart, they are sick because they do not know how to forgive. They never forget. They do not forget there is bitter, bitterness, there is their topics that are not dealt with for years, especially inside of the relationship, maybe with, in a friendship and a marriage, between father and son, a son to father, between relatives. It exists. And so, my brethren, when the Lord shows something, it's because it needs to be dealt with. 
why does he have to be dealt with? I don't know. Maybe Jesus is going to come tomorrow or maybe next week. It is a revelation from the Lord. I'm not saying that Jesus is going to come next week. No one knows the day or the hour. Only God. But he, if the Lord has revealed, surely, it's because He wants a greater growth of His people. Because the Holy Spirit needs to have a place in the heart of the humble, in the heart of the one who is forgiving or asking for forgiveness. This is all part of it. Yes, my brethren, we need as a church to take this topic seriously. Many times we, we think, oh, I'm not going to look for that person because I don't want to start a confrontation. Don't do this. Look for that person. If you have been offended, go and have a conversation. Yeah, whether it's through phone or in the church, hey, let's go and ha have a drink of coffee. Or go to my home and resolve it. You know why, my brethren? Because many times we are we are just heating up a, a, a space in a bench in a church. And the ones who suffered most, most of the times is the one that does not forgive. And you see the brother all oh, happy. He never misses a meeting in the church. never misses a visitation. He never misses a part. And you are bitter at home, biting your nails. Oh, that, that guy is there, all happy, and I'm here. I struggle. Resolve the problem. The Bible says this. The one who suffers you has not forgiven and has not dealt with the topic. That's maybe Many times he doesn't even know. That's why he's so happy, like if nothing had happened. Because for him, nothing had happened. And he's going to go to heaven, going to be left behind in the struggle. That's what happens. That's why, my brethren, we need to take advantage of this moment, this opportune moment. Only, not only for the Church of Pompano, no, no, not Ronil, no. For the entire church. Yes, and in Japan, we preach about it. And today in Korea, actually, yes, yesterday in Korea, our topic is going to be this. You know why? Because there is a need from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, has haste to remove the sickness and the bitterness of the church. They, they remove this discomfort, everything. We're going to, we need to open our hearts, my brother. Pray to the Lord. I have difficulty. I need to receive a blessing. You're going to do this right now. We're going to leave the service tonight with uh, your black book. Now, there are 10 people that I need to look for tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a tough day. But that's what it is. Don't start today. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Call today. Because at midnight, Jesus may come. If Jesus returns in half an hour, then you will be in trouble. This is biblical. This is something that comes out of my head. No, this is in the Bible. So take advantage of the moment and place your life before God's author. Amen. We're going to hear a song and you're going to be at this moment. Pray to the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, may your word and your teaching find a place in my heart and that may do like Jesus not to be simply uh, uh, just a, a request, a prayer but that I may be able to exact your instruction Amen
blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand up, my brethren. My brethren, the heaven is waiting for us. The heavens are waiting for us. Everything is already being prepared. The past is already prepared. Jesus is the way. We just need to walk in Jesus, walk in the Word. Salvation is important. But in order for us to be able to achieve sal salvation, we need to walk on the path. And the path, the way, is this. It's exactly this. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you. Glorify your name. Oh God, because every day you have taught us to, te to forgive us, to forgive, Lord. You have taught us what comes from eternity for our lives. Lord, we praise you for this path, for this love that you have had for us, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because your mercy has been the reason why we are not destroyed. Lord, we praise you because every morning we have been with your people, you have protected, you have delivered us. We want to say tonight that we love you, Lord, because you are the one who is everything for us. We praise you, Lord, for this night in your presence. We praise you, Lord, because we have been called servants of God. Lord, we praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, this topic would never stop today. We're going to be working on this topic the whole week. There are many biblical verses that uh, speak about it, teaching how to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven? Leave the word. Amen. I was going to pray. The Lord has shown a couple of spiritual gifts. I saw a sister that had. I saw a sister. She was in uh, going through a training with a sword, but it is interesting that the sword is completely dull. Imagine when you get a, a, a knife that is sharp; it hurts less. When you when you have get a knife that is dull, it hurts more. And this woman was working with a sword that had, was completely dull. And a, a smithsman took the sword and went to the fire. And then the, the, knife, the sword became sharp. And he would return the sword to the sister. And what does that mean? What does he understand? What has Jesus given this understanding in the Bible without the Holy Spirit. It is a sword without that is dull. It's like a just a story uh, uh, regarding a people that was saved and is going to heaven. But when you open the word in spirit, you pray to the Lord before reading the word. The Holy Spirit will put life in the word. It stopped being just letter and the Holy Bible, the Word of Life, to be the living Word of God. And that's when you will believe and you'll be able to forgive your brother or sister. You know why? Because the act of forgiving is an action, an act of gratitude to God. Because when you ask for forgiveness to God for your uh, offenses, then you will learn how to forgive your brother, and you will be able to forgive your brother because God forgave you. And prayer does this. The prayer generates life. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you are praying in the name of the love of God towards man. And this is what generates life. Jesus is there. Father, Jesus said to the Father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Life. When we are praying, we are taking life away because it's prophetic. It's part of the word. The sword is exactly this. It's, it's a, a word without the, 
direction of the spirit, just the letter you read just so you can fall asleep. No. Set aside time at home. Study the Bible. No, don't, don't only read. Study the Word. Pray to the Lord. Ask for, for the understanding and discernment. You, you see how much God is going to speak with you, even more. The man has a pro there's another speech that speaks about a man that has a project for his life, but he has placed the material side in the first place, giving priority to the material side. And the Lord is telling to him tonight, you know, that he, he needs to change because it is important for this work. The spiritual life needs to be placed in, in first place. You know, that's what it is. The spiritual governs the material. Seek the Lord and His kingdom, and everything else will be added on to you. Place a, in your life, in the first place, your spiritual project. Place everything on God's hands, and you see how God will put everything in order. Everything will work out. There will be no mistake. When man seeks the Lord in first place, and then everything else will be added unto him. Amen. Anything else, Pastor Saudo? Want to add something else? Let's pray, bring the service to a close. Lord God, we, at this moment, Lord, you want to ask for a blessing from the part of the Lord. So that, Lord, this service, your word, your teaching, may generate life in the hearts. Generate, Lord, a transformation in the minds, in their actions, and that we, Lord, may be better servants of the Lord, and that we may be better brothers and sisters in Christ, may be better husbands, better wives, better children, Lord, better bosses, better employees, and that we may be a better people. And it's all because Jesus died for us. And today he lives in our hearts. That's why we are like children. We de are completely dependent on the Lord. Lord, gives us blessing so that we may have a week of victories in your presence. Is a prayer that we say. I'm really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts and the blessing of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Saturday, we're going to be here once again. Surely about the same topic because we have many, many, many details to deal with. They need to be seen by all of us. Amen. And peace of the Lord to everyone. The brethren who are watching us through Zoom. Peace of the Lord. If you need an assistance, we are here at your disposal.